Great balls of fire. Don't bother me anymore. And don't call me sugar. Oh, I'll be right back. They attract visitors of all ages and origin. And they're some of the most extreme and picturesque places on Earth. Deserts, canyons, and gorges. They also have something in common. They're all formed by weathering and erosion. You might think that weathering and erosion are the same things. Well, they're related to each other, but they're not the same. Weathering is the gradual breaking down of rock into smaller pieces. When that happens, the rock stays in the same place. On the other hand, when rocks and sediments begin to move, erosion, the process that transports rock, soil, or sediment to another location, takes place. To learn about the effects of weathering, you need to know about three different types of rocks. Geologists, the scientists who study rocks, have different names for each type of rock. The names are igneous, rocks that were superheated and originally liquid magma from the center of the earth, metamorphic, rocks created by heat and or pressure, and sedimentary, rocks created when sediments compress over time. How are each of these classification of rock formed? Igneous rocks come from hot molten rock called magma, like in volcanic eruptions. One example of igneous rock is granite. Metamorphic can start out as igneous or sedimentary rocks, but they are changed by heat or great pressure. An example of metamorphic rock is marble. When sediments compress, they form sedimentary rocks, like limestone. Three quarters of the rocks on Earth are sedimentary rocks. So why are we talking so much about rocks when the show is about slow weathering? It's because weathering over time breaks down rocks, changing the face of the Earth. So what causes weathering to happen? It depends on the type of weathering taking place. We see physical or mechanical weathering when rocks are broken down without any change in the chemical nature of the rocks. The main causes for changes to rocks in slow weathering are temperature, extreme heat or extreme cold, water and wind. Sometimes there's a crack in a rock. Rainwater seeps into the crack and it expands as it freezes, causing the rock to expand and be forced apart. Extreme heat will cause rocks to expand, then contract when the weather cools, weakening the rock. Another physical weathering is called salt weathering. Water often carries salt with it, and as it evaporates, salt is left behind. As time passes, the salt deposits build up and create pressure, causing rocks to weaken and split. Chemical weathering is when the minerals that make up a rock are chemically changed. This is common where there's a lot of water, called hydration. Water gets absorbed into the minerals of the rock. When this happens, the minerals expand and are weakened. Sometimes the rainwater contains acid, also known as acid rain. When acid rain comes into contact with certain rocks, like limestone, it slowly dissolves the rock. Another way the face of the earth changes is through erosion, a process that transports rocks and sediments to a different location. You'll hear more about erosion in a later program. Let's look at an example of what weathering and erosion can do. Let's look at the desert. A desert gets less than 10 inches of rain per year. Deserts cover nearly 20 to 30 percent of the earth's surface and are a good example of the effect of slow weathering. The Sahara Desert covers most of North Africa, making it the largest hot desert on Earth. But not all deserts are hot, sandy, and dry. Antarctica is home to the largest cold desert in the world. People who live in or visit deserts must adapt to the extreme environments. Cold deserts like Antarctica are very cold. Hot deserts like the Sahara are very hot. In fact, because it's hard to find food and water in the desert, life there is often nomadic, meaning those who live there move around a lot. But despite those hardships, about a billion people live in desert regions. That means that one of every six people in the world live in a desert climate. So how is a hot desert made through slow weathering? Wind is a big factor. Wind weathers the rock and breaks it into sediments. Those sediments are transported by the wind and deposited somewhere else. This process takes place over millions of years. Year after year, the wind blows sediments or sand into heaps that grow into dunes. But not all the desert is sand dunes. Sometimes the sediments strike very hard rocks and only part of the rock becomes eroded, leaving rock formations like buttes and mesas seen in the American West. We've just learned that wind plays a big role in forming hot deserts. What about cold deserts? How are they formed? It takes a lot of snow and fog. In a cold desert, the snow never melts and thick ice forms. No plants can grow and very few animals can survive. 
There are few better ways to learn about slow weathering and erosion than studying the power of ice. The last glacial period of the Ice Age ended around 10,000 years ago, leaving behind evidence of weathering that we can see today. The Great Lakes are visible remnants of that time in history. Glaciers are literally rivers of ice that move slowly across the surface of the land. Glaciers are formed when layer after layer of snow become compacted, hardened into thick sheets of ice. This slow weathering and erosion process causes sediments to fall from the rock. The glacier picks them up as it moves, causing erosion. Deserts, canyons, and gorges, even the Great Lakes, all form through slow weathering.